In 2009, it was reported by the Federal Communication Commission's Broadband Task Force that 70% of America's teachers assign homework that requires high-speed internet access. And yet, in 2018, it was reported that over 31% of rural Americans did not have access to high-speed internet. So what happens to those students whose teachers assign homework that requires high-speed internet access? As a professor, I frequently attend conferences. I usually attend five or six meetings a year and have the opportunity to contribute ideas and hear compelling keynotes and presentations. And last year, I heard a keynote that touched me like no other. In that keynote, the presenter explained to me how technology divides our kids. It opened my eyes to the digital divide that's going on all around us. In that presentation, he explained how he met with corporate employers to learn about a particular software skill that they need and then designed a course to meet that need so that before students graduated, they would have the software skill the employers need. They would have a technological advantage. So immediately I thought about my students that aren't able to take this course. They're at a disadvantage. This is the divide. This is the digital divide. You see, technology has changed education. The internet allows students to do research online without having to go to the library. And our job as educators has changed because part of it is now helping students to filter through and navigate all of the information they have access to. So let's take it to another level. Imagine that we have two college students, one student named Jada and the other student named Jenna. Now, Jada does not have access to a computer outside of the school's computer lab. Now, what Jada does have is a smartphone that gives her internet access. Now, Jada needs to complete some of her assignments on her smartphone, which could include writing an essay and submitting it online. Now, can you imagine writing an essay on your smartphone? Now, to add to that, Jada has a limited data plan with her smartphone. So how easy will it be for Jada to complete her assignments? Now on the other hand, we've got Jenna, who has access to a desktop, laptop, tablet at home, high-speed internet access, and she has access to the computer lab at school. Not to mention, she's got a smartphone with unlimited data. So how easy is it for Jenna to complete her assignments? And it's not just about completing the assignments, it's about how much more access to technology does Jenna have over Jada. You see, it's this access to technology that can lead to more exposure to technology. And it's more exposure that can lead to higher technology skills. And it's these higher technology skills that can lead to more and better employment opportunities. And employment opportunities are the ultimate divide. This is what I mean when I say that technology divides our kids' potential from grade school to high school on up to college and university. See, students have the opportunity to improve their situation and to improve their parents' condition, which will ultimately contribute to a better society. So it's not a technology divide, it's an opportunity divide. And we all know technology is rapidly advancing and any gaps or differences in skills can be drastic. Holes exist from kindergarten on up to university that impact a student's scholastic performance in this high-tech, high-speed world that we live in. Remember, I mentioned that in 2009, it was reported that 70% of America's teachers assign homework that requires high-speed internet access. So I came back from this conference you know, feeling inspired, but at the same time, I was depressed. You know, I felt like I failed my students. I felt like I failed them 
because in my mind, they were not at the same level as those students mentioned in that presentation. But they're better than that, but they were behind. And not just behind in their technology skills, they were behind in their opportunities. So I came back thinking, how can I change this? You know, how can I fix this digital divide? So I came up with three ideas that I believe we as educators can use to help us to bridge the digital divide. Now the first idea is honesty. We have to be honest with our situation. And this may sound simple, but believe me, it's profound if you don't have any money. Because you've got to be resourceful, you've got to find workarounds, you've got to have students share technology, use free applications, free websites, and if all else fails, have thought lessons. Have the students imagine how they'll use the technology. Have the students pro solve problems with the technology using their minds. Now, if you have money, then it's a budget, it's how much money do we need, you know, where is the money? We have to be honest with ourselves. Is it me? Is it us? Are we technologically challenged? Do we need to retool or update existing skills? Is it taking classes, professional development, personal development? The second idea is a culture shift. And this is a huge challenge because it starts with the strength of honesty and it moves forward with short conversations and baby steps. See, technology is changing faster than we can adapt. We've got to be nimble. We have to adjust. And we need to cultivate a culture of innovation. The third idea is to reevaluate. We need to constantly ask ourselves, is what we're doing making sense? Do we need to change, to shift, or pivot altogether? Do we ask difficult questions? Like, do, does it make sense to buy technology today when it may change in six months? It may make sense, it may not make sense. But these are the conversations we need to have. Because we're only as strong as our weakest link. And we need to look within ourselves to find a way to impact our students, society, and the world. Let's work together to bridge the digital divide. Thank you.